the following scenario. You are in a shop in a big mall. And suddenly, you see these three men, these three men entering. You sense that something bad is about to happen. But then, a guy next to you, uh, he knocks on your shoulder. You look around and he tells you, don't worry. And he shows you his big gun he has with him. So, after a while, one of the guys, one of the three men and he says, says, hands up. And he shows his gun. People in the store, instead of getting terrified, let me say three quarters of them pulls, pulls their guns. So now you have like 60 people with guns aimed at those three men. What do you think will happen? Those three men, they ran away. Because they knew if they fired even one shot or if they even aimed at one of those people, they would be dead. Because if all those 60 people would fire one shot at a time, they all would be filled with bullets. Now, in this case, the people were armed. That's why the robbers, when they came, man, it was a big defeat for them. They couldn't continue their operation. Now, one of the individuals in that store, um, in this case, you had n no arms with you. And she considered that nobody else had arms with them. So when you panicked over there, it was all for nothing because the majority of the people there were armed. And this is what I'm telling you here. When you agree with Christ, when you really agree with him, when you operate in the in the supernatural power in the power of the supernatural, that's how you are in this world. You may be, and I'm saying this, in this parable I just give unto you this woman or man, whatever you want, but I say woman, this woman was in a shop and she saw those three men coming and she realized it's dangerous. But she was not aware of all the armed and well trained people around her. Who had no intention of using their arms for evil purposes. So she had 60 people that were armed, intended for good, around her. But she didn't see them nor notice them. She only noticed those three suspects that came in who emit this negative energy. Now, look, I'm not telling you it was wrong of her to feel frightened because it was a dangerous situation indeed. That those three men came in with their bad intent but those men fell into a trap when you are in agreement with christ you are surrounded by supernatural provisions there are holy angelic beings assigned by christ to assist you you don't have to communicate with those holy angelic beings because you don't have all the data to make sound decisions on that level for you to rule angelic beings directly you must be able to see through all circumstances and you can't christ does so that's why he has the charge of the holy angelic beings you have holy angelic beings assigned unto you they are on assignment by the most high himself on your behalf Yes, you walk by faith. Yes, you use your common sense. Yes, you use your brains. However, using your brains, using common sense, and and all of that, it's practical, but it doesn't cancel out that there are dangerous-minded people and danger, dangerous situations out there. You still need assistance, and you have it. Some of you were listening to this. It's because you had those invisible bodyguards around you. That some of you were not raped or killed. Some of you men watching this video, you had whole angelic beings terrifying the crap out of certain people. That's why they came to look for a fight for you. But once they came close, they felt so threatened. They felt doom coming on them. And they realized, hold on a minute, we need to cut this out. Because if we, if we proceed, we'll die. 
I'm telling you, when you agree with Christ, you have supernatural provision. And here's the thing, the supernatural provision doesn't depend upon your effort. It doesn't depend upon you doing the right thing. Agreeing with Christ is the right thing. Okay, so those holy angelic beings don't deal with you. They deal with Christ. Because Christ is the one who has the understanding in how to out, outsmart the enemy completely. Of course, you have your understanding that's practical also. There's nothing wrong with learning and growing in understanding. But you don't see everything. You don't notice everything. You can't. You need supernatural assistance. That's why I agree with Christ so you will walk in supernatural assistance. Some of you, the reason why you are still happily married is because of supernatural assistance. There were many people, if you are the husband, there were many people that want you to remain single and die lonely because they, they projected their hatred onto you. And this hatred indeed affected you. That's why you have so many difficulties finding a job or you have so many difficulties on, on the workplace. But when you agree with Christ, or better said, when people around you that were in agreement with Christ began to intercede on your behalf, holy angelic beings were activated. And man, a lot of folks experience a lot of trouble. And that's why you were free from that tension and you met your future wife. Or else you would have died lonely and bitter and pro probably homeless, though the oldest psychic violence against you. Now, I don't know for who this is meant, but I'm just pointing out to you, many of you have no idea how much supernatural benefits you have when you are in agreement with Christ. And here's the thing, there are pagans out there. Yes, there are pagans. They are paranormally active. There are pagans who want to be close to real believers. You know why? Because they benefit of the supernatural assistance of those believers. If you have a believer that lives in a, an apartment complex, let's say you have um, 150 apartments in that complex, and he, lived on, he lives on the 15th floor. The fact he lives in that apartment complex means that there is supernatural presence over there. Not only because he has all the spirit inside of him, but there are holy angelic beings over there marching around that apartment complex. And yes, there are people operating in the negative over there. And there are demons passing here and there, feeding off negative energy. But those demons see the holy angelic beings that are armed over there. And the demons know it's because of you. And let's say that you have a guy living there who has a gambling problem, is addicted to gambling, and you have those thugs that want money from him. And those thugs decide, you know what, to go into his house to beat him up or to kill him. And here's the thing, you live in that apartment complex, right? And there's supernatural presence over there. So when those thugs, those criminals come to look for the one that owes the money, those whole angelic beings turn on them. While they're on their way, their car breaks down, or the car is smitten to the side of the road, and those men think, what the heck is going on here? Man, they'll have, they'll have a hard time getting into the building and looking for one that owes some money and to do their thing. Here's the thing, you live in that apartment complex, you live in that building, and because of that, you deserve to be safe. So unsafety must flee from you. So if you know that guy that has a gambling issue, you don't know him, you're not related to him. You're, you don't even know he exists. He doesn't. Know, he is not into Christ and all of that. The fact he lives near you grants him a certain protection. Now, he may be aware that there is some presence with you, but he himself may not be aware that the only reason he's still alive is because he lives near you. I'm telling you, that's how it works. And let me go back to the parable. You're in that mall, in that store. Three men enter in. You become terrified. You think, oh dear, what's happening here? One of the men tell you, fear not, don't worry, we got this. The men come in, but sooner or later the men flee away because they know we can't do anything over there. I'm telling you, know who you are in Christ. 
there are false teachers out there that teach that we need to command holy angels. I'm telling you, you don't want that. Why would you want to burden yourself with such a huge task if you have Christ himself, the Lord himself, the man himself, that can lead the operation perfectly and far, far better than you do? Why would you want to take the responsibility of your security? Didn't Christ told us to cast all cares upon him because he cares for us? And now you have those pagan preachers going out there saying we can command angels. Now listen, in the Old Testament it happens that prophets commanded angels and all of that. I know. However, come on. You have something far better than those prophets had. You, you have the Holy Spirit himself dwelling in you all the time. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. So why would you want such a huge task on your sh shoulders? No. Even though the, the holy angelic beings would think, what? Why would you want to take that task on you? And I'm going to take this time to warn you about another thing. And this warning will also reveal again unto you why pagan Christianity is, is so dangerous. A lot of people want power to deal with life circumstances, especially dangerous and hurtful circumstances. And that's obvious. That's realistic. And people have this need. But they're, they're not well informed about the spirit world. Many never know. And say they will never know because nobody tells them how reality really, really operates. They don't know how the spirit world relates to the natural world. They don't know about how you as a human being are a spirit being, you have emissions, all that. They don't know all of that. But they do know that they need some power to work on their behalf. And then Satan comes with wizards and warlocks and witches that promote the paranormal with tarot cards, fortune telling, all of that publicly. And of course people will say, oh no, that's witchcraft, we don't want that. And at the same time, you have similar witches, warlocks and witches coming in the name of Christ in church, teaching people witchcraft in the name of Christ. And they even suggest unto them, you know what? You must take all the power. You must rely on yourself. And, and here's the thing. When Christ anointed those 70 disciples, that was before many disciples deserted him because they were offended. When he anointed his 70 disciples and they went out operating in power, and even the evil spirits were subjected unto them, they came back to him and they rejoiced that the evil spirits were subjected unto them. He told them, don't rejoice that those evil spirits listen to you. Rejoice what your name is written in, in the heavens. So that's Christ's attitude. And many of those men that rejoiced that they had power over demons, they deserted Christ for the most dumbest reason you can uh, imagine. Christ came with a parable about drinking blood and eating flesh. Even though it was so obvious, it was just a parable, they became offended, they became upset, and they left. Come on now. But don't understand the following. People want to deal with life circumstances. Christ understands this, but he wants you to deal with life circumstances his way. And that implies that he's the head of the operations that are called your life, not you. Yes, you are operative, but it's not you leading the operation. Okay? Maybe I need to say this one more time so it will get through to you. You are not the one leading the operation. Christ is. That's why Christ carries the burdens, not you. Yes, you operate. And you agree with him as you should. But that's your part. His part is to lead the operation, not you. And this is a trick of pagan Christianity. Pagan Christianity tells you it's you. You need to do it. You need to work hard. You need to be faithful until the end. You need to do this. Put all the focus on you. They are burdening you. And at the same time, they make they make fun of people that fall for the crap. There was this pastor, this pagan pastor from South Africa. And he began, he, he, he teached a lot of great stuff. But there was one thing he thought that was heretic. He said that we, by our own strength, could overcome physical death. So we won't have to be resurrected. I don't know how people kept going to that church. I don't know how people worldwide came 
to listen to this guy. The fact he said something like that should already have put him on the blacklist. But okay, this pagan bastard even made fun of people that thought they could command angels. He's saying it's all BS and he laughed at those people. That's all nonsense. But here's the thing, it's not nonsense that human beings can command angels. It happens. But here's the thing, why would you want it if you have the Lord himself leading you? Come on. So, first you have those pagan church telling you that you have to take all the power. And then you have this pagan pastor telling you that you can't take power. And at the same time he comes out this message by, by making fun of you for believing this message. That's black magic. And this happens often in pagan Christianity. That's why I'm telling you to get away from that demonic stronghold. Because it's venom. It will kill you. Anyway, just remember, Christ leads the operations that are called your life, not you. Okay? Yes, you look at the bigger picture. Yes, you are supernaturally armed also. Yes, you do. You fight the good fight of faith. Yes, you take action. Yes, you look beyond. Yes, you are active. You should be active. But your activity is not the final. Your activity is not all determining. Christ is. Sometimes you're, you're doing the right thing. And you go very far in it. And that's okay. And suddenly it seems as if it's all, it was all for nothing. Now what happened? Christ redirects you to something else. He as Lord saw that what you did was right. You did the right thing, but Christ had enough of some of those people, so he redirects you. What happened in Kadara when Christ came and delivered those two demoniacs? You know the story of how the demons went into the pigs, drowned the pigs, and the whole community came. They became, fri became frightened of what Christ had done, and they wanted Christ to leave. Christ went to the boat first. The disciples followed him. Look at this. Christ went no contact with those people. And look at what I'm telling you here. The same thing is doing today. There are people Christ goes no contact with. That no contact thing is not something pagans came up with. Christ came up with. He went no contact with the people from Kadar and with more people. The same is doing today. When people persist in the negative and they become dangerous, he goes no contact with them. And when Christ goes no contact with someone, why would he allow you to be there? If he himself doesn't want to be there. And here's the thing. Christ went into the boat to sail, uh, to, to move away. Who is his boat today? You. Because you have his Holy Spirit inside of you. So if Christ enters his boat to move away and his boat today is you. That means that when he goes to contact, he will draw you away. He will relocate you. Okay, so Christ is the one leading the operations that are called your life, not you. That should give you joy. That should give you strength. That should make you rejoice because you are secured. Know who you are in Christ. Be at peace.